This is the Scorpion ADF 9000, which I think is one of the nicest looking adventure style helmets on the market at the moment. It's got plenty of good features too. So does its performance match up to how good it looks? Let's find out. This model is the French manufacturer's top of the range adventure style helmet and it is packed with features. So let's start off with looking at the construction and the technical aspects of the helmet before we move on to the riding experience. The shell is made from Scorpion's TCT ultralight composite, which is offered in three shell sizes across the extra small to three extra large helmet sizes. It is, of course, as all new helmets are ECE2206 certified. And in this lovely desert red, white and blue color scheme, it retails at £329.99. Plain colors are priced at £299.99. The ADF 9000 features Scorpion's airlift system, which aids in getting a nice snug fit. There are inflatable sections in the cheek pads, which can be pumped up by using the push pump in the chin bar. This gives very precise control and to release the air there is a little push button relief valve to the side. It's a nice feature which I initially thought was a little bit of a gimmick and it carries over from previous Scorpion helmets but actually it is quite a useful feature. The shield offers a really wide and tall aspect of vision and there's a pin lock 70 max vision supplied with the helmet. The helmet also ships with a tinted visor in the box as well. You'll be pleased to hear that the shield does have a quick release system and the visor can be changed without the need to remove the peak. It's very easy to do as well, but the first time you do it, it does feel like you're going to break something. Just give the top peak screw a quarter turn to release it, swing the peak up out of the way and then open the visor to line up the arrows on the visor itself and the mechanism. Then you just pull it out in that direction. It does feel aggressive, but actually it's a pretty slick system. Replacing the shield is just the exact reverse option. The eye port is big enough to take pretty much any pair of goggles and that can be used with the visor in place if you want. There is a drop down visor, which Scorpion called the speed view. The control lever looks a little utilitarian, but it's really easy to find and operate with gloves on and it has a slick and quiet action. Personally, I'd like that visor to drop just a little bit further and there isn't any adjustment to do that. It wasn't a problem, it's just a personal preference. I'd like it to come as low as possible. And obviously you can change that internal visor. Ventilation comes via this switchable vent on the chin bar and there is also a slider inside to be able to close that off completely. And two single action vents on the top which are either open or closed. There's two exhaust ports on the rear to help expel warm air, one on the top and the broad section that runs right across the back. And the city mode allows the visor to be cracked open enough to allow airflow in it and it holds that position well, even at speed. Airflow is pretty decent, but I didn't find it to be particularly exceptional. Inside the box is an action cam mount which allows you to replace the rocker switch opening on the chin with a flat mount. A very nice touch, I think, for those of us that want to film our rides. The interior is plush and comfortable with a really nice feel to it. There's a chin sock to help keep unwanted noise and draft out of the helmet. The lining is removable to be able to wash it. And there are also cutouts in the EPS liner for speakers. And they'll take speakers up to 50 millimeters in diameter. The side of the helmet is relatively flat-ish and there's plenty of room so if you wanted to fit a different comm system I don't think you'd have any problems with this at all. Scorpion quick fit also means that this helmet is good for spectacle wearers because there are adjustable cutouts in the lining to take the arms of your glasses. Now on the road I thought the helmet performed really well. Ventilation is good without being outstanding. Vision is really good. The drop down visor offers a decent amount of sunscreening and the switches and the controls are all easy to find and operate. It's pretty well balanced, not the lightest helmet on the market at 1,650 grams for this size large, but that's about in the middle of the road, that's pretty good. The peak is stable with only the usual kind of light grab on shoulder checks and I didn't get any annoying vibrations. 
Scorpion, I think, have done a good job at isolating the peak from the shell so that you don't get any annoying vibrations coming through. I rode this on several bikes uh, and I didn't really have any problems in terms of vibrations. Wind noise, yes. Vibrations, no. On to noise, and as I say in all of my helmet reviews, that is very subjective, and everybody that wears this helmet will have a different experience. But on the whole, I thought the ADF 9000 was pretty good. The chin sock and close fitting neck rolls help to prevent the noise coming from underneath the helmet, which is usually the biggest creator of noise. And I tried it on several bikes and there wasn't that much difference in terms of wind noise between those bikes. It was fairly consistent. There's obviously more wind noise than on a peakless helmet, of course, but in terms of adventure style helmets, I would put this in the relatively quiet category. Now, I didn't encounter that much rain in the time that I've been riding on this helmet, but I did get caught in a few showers, and I'll have to say I didn't have any issues with water leaking in with the visor closed, and I also didn't have any issues with fogging. That seems to work really well. The only one time I did is for that internal drop-down visor, although that does have an anti-fog coating on it. I tend to find that when it's retracted and it's up in the shell, if I'm getting hot and it's colder outside, whenever you put it down, there's always going to be an element of fogging. But it did clear pretty quickly once I'd opened the chin vent. All in all, I was impressed with the ADF 9000. It looks, feels and performs like a premium helmet, but it's priced a little bit more towards the middle of the market. I personally have an intermediate oval, probably leaning more towards long oval shaped head, and that was the biggest downfall of this helmet for me. It's just a little bit too round at the front. It was bearable for short runs, but as you can see, it just didn't accommodate my forehead. Large is my usual size. Generally, that's my starting point. I'll pick up a large helmet. Uh, some fit me better than others, and there are some brands where that sizing is a little bit off. I did notice that this is recorded as a 58 to 59 centimeter for a large. I'm probably closer to a 60, so it's just a case that I think for this particular helmet, I'm kind of in between sizes. I did try an extra large to see if going up to that would help, but it was a bit, it fitted me like a bucket to be honest. So although I thought this may be a really good long-term helmet for me, I like the look of it, I like the features, it's really nicely finished, but the sizing and or shape mean it's not gonna be for me, which is a shame because this colorway goes really nicely with the Africa Twin. So all in all, a really well put together helmet with a lovely finish, plenty of useful features, and it looks good too. Pricing I think is also competitive, but it's definitely a helmet where I would say, as with any helmet, try before you buy. So if you're considering this helmet or looking at adventure helmets in general, I hope you found this a useful video. If you do have any questions, then make sure to drop those in the comment section down below and I will get back to you. And all that leaves me to say is until next time, thanks for watching, take care, ride safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.